People often scrutinize compiler-generated output, such as that produced by the Microchip MPLAB XC compilers, identifying sequences that they think could be improved. This is understandable, since everyone wants to make full use of their device. But with the benefit of hindsight, it is very easy to criticize anomalies. However, it is a good point. Why is it that modern compilers can produce code that looks like it could be improved? To understand why, you need to know how compilers produce code, and the challenges faced during code generation. Controls allow optimizers to be enabled, but why are optimizations needed at all? Why not just produce the most optimal code, first time, every time? Compilers are naive when it comes to generating code. They have to be. There's too much information, even in a small program, to process all at once. What do we mean by naive? In the same way that we break up complex problems into smaller, easier tasks and perform them sequentially, so too compilers consider just one expression at a time, building up statements, then functions in a program. This method of cogeneration is accurate, and it can be performed easily, quickly, and reliably. Naive doesn't mean in a haphazard manner, though. The output is still optimal, it's just that when the sequences generated from different expressions come together, instructions in one might render redundant instructions in the other. As in this example, where a register was stored, then oddly reloaded with the same value immediately after. Once the output is laid out in front of you, it is easy to see what might be considered remiss, but the compiler has no reasonable way of predicting that this will occur. Since expressions are considered in isolation, the compiler has to produce output that will work in any context. So, for example, the code generated for a Boolean expression must be usable in an if statement, as well as in the value in an assignment. In addition, the compiler has to consider potential limitations in the target assembly instruction set. So although the Boolean expression code shown here might seem reasonable, the size of the final true code is not known at this point, and so it is not clear if the target to the conditional branch will be in range. Compilers often make fewer assumptions at the expense of larger code, such as the following, which requires the conditional branch to jump over only a single go-to instruction. This code can reliably generate a value when used in an assignment, or be used in the controlling expression for an if statement, even though it does appear to contain unnecessary jumps. Optimizations can be performed at all stages of compilation, but you can see that once code has been generated and further information has become available, the compiler has an opportunity to clean up any inefficiencies which resulted from the naive assumptions made earlier. Optimizations are no more than transformations, each seeking to improve one small aspect of the generated code, provided certain safeguards can be met. For example, to clean up the if statement code seen in the previous slide, the compiler might look for instructions that jump to other jump instructions. The transformation might simply change the destination of the first jump to that of the second provided that this new destination is known to be in range. This could be followed by another transformation that removes unreachable labels and instructions, another that removes jumps to destinations immediately following, and now that the sizes of code blocks are known, one that changes conditional branches over jumps to reverse conditional branches to the jump destination. This code is optimal but was obtained using fast and reliable compilation that used only naive code generation principles, followed by simple transformations. So why might a compiler's output still seem unoptimal? Optimizations don't happen by magic. Compiler writers have to be aware of which transformations will benefit each architecture, implement the code to perform the transformations, ensure that no situation could lead to code failure, and provide tracking mechanisms and data structures to obtain and hold the required information. Thus, 
even if a transformation is implemented, it may not be applied if the compiler cannot ensure its usage is safe. Furthermore, the order in which transformations are applied can affect how well they work, and the best order might vary from program to program. When you build, you might intentionally request a lower optimization level, which will restrict or customize the set of transformations that the compiler will attempt to perform. However, even level 1, which is selectable when using the unlicensed MPLAB XC compiler, will improve the most vexing code sequences resulting from the naive way in which the output was generated. Using fewer transformations has other benefits too, such as speeding up the compilation time and improving the ability to track operation of the program when using debugging tools. To conclude, don't be too surprised by the unoptimized output of a compiler. Naively producing code is simply a better way for them to work. Don't be scared of optimizations. They're just transformations that can improve the performance of code. Don't be afraid to adjust the optimization level to suit the circumstance. Maybe to target speed over space or improve debuggability during code development. And finally, don't readily dismiss the unlicensed MPLAB XC compilers. They're fast, employ many of the available optimizations, and best of all, they're free.